Welcome to the Google Genealogist, utilizing the latest tools from Google to find your family history. This will be part two in the series. If you haven't seen part one, I suggest you do that. It'll give you some background on Google and some search tips that will be helpful for you. The process again I'm hoping to describe here is one of finding. This will be the second video in the finding section. Later I'll talk about organizing and ultimately publishing your family history. So the Google Genealogist takes full advantage of technology and the internet to preserve and provide family history. And with that, we'll get into the first of two products that I'll demonstrate today, uh, Google Alerts and Google Books, in helping you find your family history. So Google Alerts, we're just going to jump right in here and do a little demo. I'm going to click this little microphone that's part of voice searching now, Google Alerts. And here I am, Google Alerts, monitor the web for interesting new content. And that's exactly what a Google Alert is. You can monitor a news story, you can keep current on a competitor or industry, or a celebrity or sports teams. Once you create a Google account, you can sign in and manage your alert. You can have multiple alerts. It's basically just a saved search that will return, again, links to you, downloading the web, keeping the links, and give you those links and in this case we're interested in doing ancestor alerts so I'll show you how to how to do that I'll type in one of my surnames in my family Davenport and then what I'm gonna do is something called a synonym search the little tilde I'll do it's right above your tab key and then I'll type genealogy and you can see as I'm doing that this layout over here is changing and this is a new layout for alerts but something that's pretty fun it gives you basically a preview so you can see that I've got several different alerts that it's picking up. Then I come in here and say how often, or excuse me, what type I want. I want everything uh, once a day. No, I want once a week. And then I want only the best results. So I'll leave that as is. And then I'll put my email in here. You don't have to have a Gmail account to create this. But then you just create your alert and you've saved a search and you can have emails sent to you. Let me show you a couple of examples of things that I've done and alerts that I've created. I was looking for some information on somebody in California, so I created an, I created an alert there. I was looking on uh, Utah, in Utah, for some information on some Scandinavian ancestors, same in Massachusetts, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. But again, you see the phrase searching and also the plus searching that we've discussed. But you archive and save these searches, and then you're able to get alerts. So here are some of the things that I found. I was given a link one day, sent an email from Google on my Ibsen ancestors. Ibsen is a surname that I've been researching and I got a book from BYU Archives, the Family History Archives, in digital form and the link said this book has been digitized, here you go. And I was able to look at this book, download, print, save, do all kinds of things but I wasn't aware that this book even existed much less than it had been digitized until I had an alert send this to me. So that was a great find for me. I was able to get a book. Uh, also was sent a picture of an ancestor, Thomas Davenport, from Southern Utah University. I was given a link and I was able to get this image in great quality. I had seen a picture of him before but not quite this good. And then beyond that I was sent a link to a blog called the Utah Pottery Project Archaeology blog. Well come to find out, I'll just jump in here and show you the blog. There was some people from the universe in a, a university in Michigan that were given some funding and came out to southern Utah and were digging up pottery. Well, it wasn't any old pottery. It was my ancestor's pottery. And so I get onto their blog back in 2009 and start reading about the Davenports in England. Well, it didn't take me long to realize that this was my Davenport family. So he's blogging about my ancestor, and I didn't even know about it. I was able to go in here as well and follow the activity and was able to actually see images of the dig that they were doing. I was so excited I called my grandparents who lived down there and said, Grandma and Grandpa, do you know about the dig going on there? And they said, oh yes, of course we do. We've had all the archaeologists over for dinner. We know them and they're great. And so it was local news to them, but not to me. But because I was sent a link, I was able to get information on this, uh, on this site, which was definitely relevant to me. Also, I was able to find an image from Footnote, again from Southern Utah University, with Thomas Davenport's name on it. This was a ledger uh, from the Deseret Iron Company account book. 
And so that was another find that was great and helpful for me. Google Alerts are free, and the Google Genealogist has several Google Alerts operating at any given time. Google Books is the second product I'll discuss. We'll jump in there and show you Google Books as well. This is the home page. I won't talk about the e-bookstore, but it's a great thing. If you've got a mobile device, you can download the app, and then you can actually download books and store them in your app and have access to hundreds and hundreds of books. It's really great. You can sign in, manage a library, and keep track of all kinds of different things. If you can't find a book that you're interested in, uh, WorldCat's integrated with Google Books and it can tell you who has the book in the closest library uh, in proximity to you. So let's research a topic. I'm going to do an ancestor. William Hickenlooper was one of my ancestors. But I'm not just going to do that. I'm going to do plus Utah and see what I find. Okay. So now that I'm in here, I can see a little bit of what the offerings are for, for this. You know, I know something else about William Hickenlooper. I know he was the bishop of the sixth ward for like 40 years. So I'm going to change my search to William Hickenlooper plus the sixth ward. And then I'm going to try this historical record right here. Well, I jump into the book and you can see the name is already highlighted for me. Also, I jump straight to page 313, which is fantastic. I'm going to scroll up a bit and here I have a whole history of the sixth ward, where it was, what happened there, uh, the bishop, the brass band that used to play. I have all of this information digitally because I did a search within Google Books. Now people often ask, won't I get Google Book results in my web searches? You might, but I highly recommend you do your searching within Google Books itself. So this is a fantastic find for me. I'm able to read all about the ward that he was bishop of, read all about the uh, counselors that he had. Just a tremendous, tremendous treasure for me. Over here, I see this little PDF button. I can type in this. A little phrase and then I can download the book because it's in the public domain also let's say I don't want the whole book but I just want to clip I clip, click this little clip button and then I can come in and drag uh, around what I want and then I can get a link and a you know a, some text that I can embed or email to people so that's a little bit about this particular search let's do an international search let's do something that's not in Utah I'm going to come in and do Ashby, which is one of my surnames, and then I'm going to do the tilde again and do genealogy. Well, here I am in New England Historical and Genealogical Register. Yes, I know the Ashby's were in Massachusetts for a long time. Here's one, a genealogical and heraldic history of the landed gentry of Great, great Britain, I'm assuming. So here's some stuff on Ashby over in England, which is great. So I can come in here and do some research Northampton and look as well at results through Google Books that have been scanned. And of course this one as well I can download and get information as well. So do some searching within Google Books, it'll be tremendous for you. For books then, the Google Genealogist uses Google Books to save time, effort, and money by doing research online. And the Google Genealogist, once again, takes full advantage of technology and the internet to preserve and provide family history. I hope this class has been helpful to you, and good luck in finding your ancestors.